Now that things are stable again, I wonder if I could fix some of the wheel thin areas on my scalp with some adjustments to my stack. I'm definitely interested in stuff like topical finasteride and spironolactone since the studies I've read show real promising results. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's time for my 14th installment of my hair loss vlogging series where I share my own journey with hair loss and how I try and deal with it on a daily basis. If you're new to this vlog, my name is Philippe and I struggle with hair loss as you probably also do. In these vlogs, I usually share whatever personal experience I get with stuff like finasteride, IU5841, microneedling, CBO301 and so on and so on. Last time we talked about me changing my protocols as I learned more and more over the time, which would only make sense since I do strongly believe in these videos that I post and hence I usually take my own advice when I post new videos and well, that ends up in me changing my protocol. Well, this time you might get a little sneak peek into the different topics that I'm actually researching at the time. But first, just to clarify, I'm still using IU5841 at 80 milligrams a day, one milligram of finasteride, 100 milligrams of NMN and microneedling. And that protocol definitely works, but I still have a long way to go. And I know I should probably just be happy with whatever I got, and I definitely am. But all of you probably know what I'm referring to when I say that I have my bad patches or bad spots of hair. It is the one that usually doesn't bother me, but if I stand under a specific bright light in a specific posture, you can actually see the place that I'm talking about. And the reason why I know that that spot is fixable is because of this old picture that I have where you can actually see how much worse this spot was a few years back. So I want to nuke that area a bit, but I'm still researching the available options. My first option would be to add KX826 aka pyrolutamide to my stack. I have a history with pyrolutamide and it's not good. But the difference is that last time I quit the IU5841, which was a pretty bad idea and I never saw if pyrolutamide actually worked because seven weeks after stopping IU5841, I looked like a chimpanzee and had to abort the whole project. In retrospect, quitting IO5841 and replacing it with pyrolutamide was not a fair trial on pyrolutamide at all. Kinsos trials on pyrolutamide is extremely promising and I was really frustrated that it went so bad for me. But that is entirely my own fault for doing something that was so stupid considering all the studies that I read myself. The next option is topical finasteride. I'm not going to cite a bunch of studies here. Topical finasteride has definitely proven its usefulness in the battle against hair loss. But here is something that you might not know. Several studies have actually deemed topical finasteride better than oral in dealing with androgenic alopecia. Just take a quick look at the numbers here and just to clarify, these numbers represent how many had weak growth and topical finasteride is almost 33% better at regrowth than the oral one. Now, I'm not going to quit oral finasteride since I believe that being on TRT and sometimes using stuff like Anava and so on, that I have enough antigenic activity from that stuff compared to my natural DHC. But I was considering to add topical finasteride to reduce my scalp DHC even further since it apparently is showing promising results comparing to the oral route. Before you ask me where I get these things, look in the description. There's links for most of this stuff that you could ask for. And if it's not there, go and ask and I will add it to the list so others won't have to ask themselves. The last option is that I'm currently researching spironolactone. And this drug seems to be very versatile. It's a diuretic and an antiandrogen by inhibiting the hormone aldosterone. Mostly used to treat hyperaldosteronism, but is now being studied as a potential hair loss treatment. 
I'm not going to go into details on what I've gathered so far, since I will be making videos on each subject on its own in the coming weeks. But here are some of the main takeaways from the study. When applied directly to the scalp, topical spinolactone exhibited a stronger ability to stimulate hair growth and counteract the effect of androgenic alopecia, which involves the influence of androgens and the mechanisms of action specific to topical spironolactone, which involves inhibiting androgen production and blocking their impact on the hair follicles, seem to be more effective in promoting hair growth than the mechanisms associated with topical finasteride. So it's stronger than topical finasteride, and topical finasteride is apparently stronger than oral finasteride, but it has to be applied as a cream. And I read several places that the odor isn't very pleasant. So that is something I'm also considering if I want that on my head. As I said before, I won't go into details in this vlog. The subjects that I'm studying will take me at least 30 minutes to explain in this vlog if I had to do them all over once again. And I'm only sharing what I'm working on for my next videos since it made me speculate if I should add one of the treats to my stack. So guys, if any one of you have some experience with one of the treat drugs, I would love to hear about it in the comment section. I can see a lot of my audience is very knowledgeable and have your own tests and trials with different compounds. So I thought maybe some of you guys actually had some experience with this. So if you have thoughts, experience, or just want to post an article that you think could be of interest to me, please share them in the comment section. And if you've got five seconds, please remember to like this video so I get pushed forward to other people who might enjoy this kind of content. And I think this covers this vlog for today. If you want to know more about hair loss, feel free to check out some of my other videos and I'll see you next time.